In our last unit, we learned that not all atoms are stable. We know that the noble gases on the end of every row are stable, and they're stable because they have eight valence electrons. But not every atom has eight valence electrons. And in order to become stable, they're either going to need to gain or lose or find some other way to get to eight valence electrons. So we're going to look at how ions form and while they're doing it. So ions are charged atoms. So once an atom has become charged, we call it an ion. And the way they become charged is by gaining or losing electrons, not protons. Changing the protons changes what element we have. Gaining or losing electrons charges the atom and forms an ion. Now, um, if you lose an electron, that means you end up as a positive ion. And sometimes students struggle with this, but if we think about why. If we started with, say, carbon, and carbon has six protons and six electrons, well, carbon, turns out, won't really gain or lose electrons. But if it lost an electron, and I only had five of these, well, then I'd have five negatives and six positives, and that leaves me positive. So losing a negative charge means I'm going to end up with a positive charge. Gaining a negative charge means I'm going to end up with a negative ion. So you got to think that gaining negative makes you negative. Losing negative makes it positive. Um, atoms form ions by gaining or losing electrons, so their outer energy level is full. Remember, we're trying to obey the octet rule. The octet rule says that atoms are stable when they have eight valence electrons. When they have uh, their last energy levels full, that makes the atom stable. However, there's different ways to reach that stability. And sometimes, like things with four valence electrons being stuck in the middle of trying to get down a level or up a level, they actually don't ionize. And instead of gaining or losing electrons, they might share electrons with other atoms. Uh, that's for a different lesson, but we'll look at that too. So like I said, there's different paths that have different amounts of energy changes in order to get this. So we're trying to get to stable electron configuration, which yes, that means eight valence electrons, but there's some routes that are easier to take than others. And it depends on what you already have. Uh, metals tend to have one or two or three electrons. Well, it's easier to lose one or two or three electrons than to gain five, six, or seven. Since it takes less energy to give up an electron than pull in lots of electrons, metals tend to lose electrons. And since they're losing electrons, they have a positive charge. So metals, positive ions. Okay, uh, And a positive ion is called a cation. That's Split that here. It's not cation, it's cation. Nonmetals have the opposite problem. They tend to have five, six, or seven valence electrons, which means it's easier to gain one, two, or three electrons than to give away five, six, or seven electrons. And so that means nonmetals tend to form negative ions. So nonmetals are negative ions, will form negative ions, and that means uh, they get their own name called an anion. Now, anion is the one that's easier for me to remember because A is A and N is negative. So this is a negative ion. A negative ion is called an anion. Now, interesting things happen when those two get together, but that's for the next unit. What we want to look at is kind of why this is happening. So it says draw a model of a sodium-23 atom and determine what type of ion it will form. Well, sodium, if we go to the periodic table, has symbol Na. Uh, sodium-23, but all sodium atoms have 11 protons. That also means 11 electrons, and that also has 12 neutrons. So in the nucleus, 12 neutrons, 11 protons, and then I can start putting in my electrons. Two electrons fit on the first energy level, eight electrons fit on the next energy level, and that gets me a total of 10 electrons, but I need 11 electrons, so I have to put one more out on the third energy level. Well, that electron right there is unstable. It's making this thing not have eight. So I could either add seven more to this outer level or I could get rid of this one. And if I get rid of that one, then I'll have 12 uh, neutrons, 11 protons, and only 10 electrons. So this thing is actually going to pop off an electron and drop down. And what we get is sodium with a one plus charge. That's how we denote the sodium ion. It's got the positive there up at the top right because it's got a one plus overall charge after it lost an electron. So this is the sodium ion. And since its charge is one, you usually don't write one, so you can write sodium plus. Now, if it had lost two electrons, it'd be a sodium two plus, but sodium only loses one because once it loses this electron, well, then you can see that its outer occupied level has eight and it's stable with eight valence electrons. Now, sulfur-32 is a little bit of a different story. Sulfur has 16 protons, 
Uh, since it's sulfur-32, it'll have 16 neutrons, and it'll also have 16 electrons. Well, if we go ahead and put in our protons, 16 protons, and we put in our neutrons, 16 neutrons, and we put in our electrons, there's two here, and there's two, four, six, eight here. That gets me a total of 10. That means I need six more. So I'm going to put in one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see this level is two spots away from having eight valence electrons, or it could drop six to try to fill that other level, but dropping six is harder than gaining two. So what this thing is actually going to do is pull in an electron. It's got an open spot, so it'll take in an electron here, and it's got an open spot, so it'll take in an electron here, which means sulfur is going to form a two minus ion. Now, one of the ways it's easy to do this is on the periodic tables, look at how many valence electrons it has, see if it's closer to zero or eight, and then you can get its charge. And we'll look at that with our next example. So draw valence electron diagrams for the following atoms and determine what type of ions they will form. Well, magnesium, if we look on the periodic table, is in group two, which means it has two valence electrons. It's also a metal. Because it's a metal and it has two valence electrons, we know it's going to lose those electrons, which means magnesium will get rid of its valence electrons and instead have a two plus charge. This is a stable ion, it's magnesium ion. It's charged now, but it has eight valence electrons because it gives away the two in its outer level, which means the previous level is going to be full and stable. Aluminum will do a similar thing. Aluminum, if we look, is in group 13 or 3A. It's got three valence electrons. It is a metal, that means it gives away those electrons, and so it will form an aluminum three plus ion. That's aluminum that has lost three electrons. This one leaves, this one leaves, this one leaves, and that means it's only left with 10 electrons and 13 protons. It's a three plus ion. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. So if we look at its electron dot diagram, it looks like this. It's got one open spot. It's a non-metal, which means it's going to take an electron in. And so it's going to form a chlorine with eight valence electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and draw them all in now. But because it's got one extra electron than proton, it is a one minus ion. So we've got metal cations and non-metal anions.